it's time to install the solar panels. So while I was out at Lowe's getting some parts for the camper, my solar panels came in. Six of them. This is exciting. Six 200 watt solar panels and all of the hardware. It's getting serious, folks. Hey everybody, I'm Bill with Live Simple Live Free. I am not going to be doing the, the, the total uh, solar electrical install on this truck. I'm going out to Utah. I've mentioned this many times. I'm going out to Utah and have my friend Jeff out there do it. He has a professional van, custom van building company and he's going to do all the electrical work for me. But I am going to be installing the solar panels on the roof for several reasons. One is it save a little bit of money to do it myself instead of, you know, pay him to do it. And the other is that uh, on the way out, I will be able to plug in my little solar generator into the roof and uh, that's not big enough to you know drive like our uh, air conditioner and all those kinds of things but it will give us power for computers and things like that on the drive out and the only other way to charge that would be to plug it into the dashboard and that's very slow so i'm excited to get these solar panels up um, i've had a a, a few uh <clears throat> challenges i guess with this box truck because you know it's not a Sprinter or a Transit or a ProMaster, those vans all, ha or a Econoline, those vans all have uh, solid steel roofs, ceilings, and you just bolt the uh, solar panels right down to this, to that roof, the metal roof. This one, on the other hand, has a very thin aluminum sheet metal roof, and that gives some problems. If I just bolted it down to it, first of all, I don't know if it would hold the weight, but the main thing is I'm concerned that it would, the wind would just rip it right off. So I was trying to debate for a while, maybe I could take a, you know, a big piece of plywood and glue it up underneath and then to the metal and then screw it down through the metal into the plywood. That would help give it some more support, make it a little stronger so it wouldn't rip out uh, the metal by the wind. But I finally came up with another solution. I'm going to put roof racks. And then that was another problem because most roof racks are narrow, five, six feet wide at the most, uh, to fit, you know, cars and trucks and things like that. This is eight feet wide, and I had to find not only a roof rack that was would go the full eight feet. Well, if I used a smaller one, I could bolt it to the to the roof, but then I had the same problem. So I had to find a roof rack that not only went a full eight feet wide, but also instead of bolting down this way it would bolt this way onto the sides and I searched for a long time for this and I really like the uh, roof racks that I have now um, they expand they're expandable anywhere from I think six feet five and a half feet up to nine feet so it's plenty room so uh, to go across there so, so let me show you these roof racks this is the bar that goes across the top it's expandable you can slide it right there in and out so you get it to the, the width that you need and then you just put two screws right in there and that holds the width. And then this is the end piece, slides right on there. And once again, you just bolt it through. This, the end piece has got this on the bottom where it just bolts right to the side instead of to the top. It bolts to the side of the truck. This will work nicely. This is designed to hold 400 pounds, designed to co hold like construction ladders and things like that. So I was very glad to finally find this online. It took me a long time to find it. I finally found it on Amazon. So here's my roof and I got two of them just laid up here. Now I almost had another serious problem and just by dumb luck, I lucked out and it works. And that is the roof vent. These will be three across and it's going to take the entire roof uh, to go all the way across and the, I installed that roof vent not knowing where I was going to put the solar panels and I didn't want the solar panels to hang off the end of the roof so when I started right there at the end where I want that and I laid them out look at how much room I've got so if I had installed the roof vent six inches further back these wouldn't have fit in there and I would have been in trouble. I wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been able to put all six of them on the roof. 
Uh, so that was just dumb luck that that worked out. And the other thing that was just dumb luck <laughs> was this placement of the door because those roof racks now are going to come down on the side and you see the solar panels laying on top. There's one and then the second one. So I need to have one of those uh, roof racks right there and right there, right on both sides of the door. They, they come down on the wall lower than the top of the door. I could have ended up where I had to put one right where the door was and that wouldn't have worked. So this, once again, is just dumb luck the way it turned out perfectly to fit the roof racks on both sides of the door. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Now this is the solar panel that I'm using. It's a rigid panel by Renergy and it's 200 watts. So, and I've got six of these, so I'm gonna have a total of 1200 watts of solar panel on the roof, which is fairly substantial. I've seen a lot of RVers, full-time RVers even, uh, make do with a lot less. But I wanna have enough power to run that mini split air conditioner. So I'm gonna have 1200 watts plus uh, substantial battery base as well. Uh, 600 amp, uh, amp hours or more so this is the hardware I had another challenge I had to overcome this is the, the the mounting hardware and it goes on like this and you screw it into the bottom and then you're supposed to screw this down to the ceiling to the roof but I'm going to be mounting this and there's no way to mount that like that so what I've come up with is a u-bolt like this, I'll have to drill new holes in closer. But the U-bolt will go like that. And then I'll be able to bolt down the hardware like that through, through the holes that I drill. So, what do you think? Is that going to work? I think it's a pretty creative solution. So the first thing I need to do is mount the roof racks up there. Now, I've been out here this morning since can barely see 6, 6 a.m. trying to beat the sun because the sun is right behind those trees it's just starting to come up once the sun hits this roof it'll be too hot for me to work up there I can I can work from the side mounting the roof racks but as far as climbing up on top of there to mount the solar panels once about 10 o'clock or something like that it'll be so hot on that metal roof I won't be able to work on it until tomorrow so I'm trying to get as much done as I can while it's still cool. Now as I'm putting this up here like this, I'm trying to keep the bar as close down to the roof as I can. I could put it all the way up here or even up here, but it's sticking way up in the air. I want to get it down close because I don't want to increase the height of the roof too much too much the height right here is 10 feet i already have that roof vent which increases it another five inches so right now my clearance is five is 10 feet five inches when i put this on here and i, and I just kind of lined it up with the top of the roof vent it looks like this is a couple inches higher so i might have a clearance of 10 feet seven inches or eight inches something like that i'll have to measure it once i'm done but I'm trying to keep it as low as I can to keep my my overall height as low as possible for bridges and underpasses and things like that.
Now I'm working over here on the other side. And I got to do some measuring, measuring to make sure that it's exactly lined up with the one that I already did over there. So I'm not going to show you the rest of this, screwing this up because it's exactly like what I did on the other side. I'll put this one here and I'll put another one back here. All right, that worked well. So, <clears throat> this is now looking good. I have to tighten these up. I had to put a couple of set screws in here. And uh, the height, about an inch off the, off the roof. I'm very happy with that. See what I mean about this aluminum sheet metal? It's just not very strong to hold any of that kind of weight. So this is a very good, solution I think. Okay, I've now got the mounting hardware mounted on the panel, at least the first one. So I wasn't able to get up here this afternoon to install the, the solar panels because this metal was too hot. But I was able to stand on the uh, ladder here on the side and install the other racks. So now I have all four of the roof racks installed. And uh, I, I put this one solar panel up here just to see how it's going to work and I think it'll work well. Here's the U-bolt that I'm going to be putting in. Just like that. Just have to drill some holes. I'll be able to mount that down. So that's going to work well. But that's for tomorrow. It's probably getting cool enough that I could work up there now but, but it's now evening and I'm tired so 
tomorrow morning I'll be out here again putting up the rest of this, actually finishing up the solar panels, I hope. But I got bought this kit that has this crimping tool and has all of these extra fittings that I can just cut off the wires where I need to, reinstall these, and take out all the excess. I've also got these little cable clamps that um, I'm going to use to attach the cable right here. I was looking for metal ones, but I couldn't find them. All I found was this nylon. This might be better anyway. It's not going to cut into the cable. And if it would be any problem with the sunlight, it'll be underneath where it won't be seen. So I'll go ahead and use these. I think I'll put it up here so that I can attach it on both ends. Put this wood behind it just so I don't drill into this thing. That wouldn't be good. Put the cable clamp on it. crimped on there well enough. Let me do it one more time just for sure. it up. Pretty nifty little kit. I like that. I can cut this one off to match it. So now I've got this done all nice and tight. No extra wire flapping around in the wind. I like that. I had to do it here before I put it on the roof because once it's on the roof I can't get underneath to do that. But the connections are still right here where I can make them easily. So it's now the next morning and I wanted cooler. Wow it's 42 degrees this morning which is pretty chilly for the last day of May. It's May 31st. Yeah, you might not be seeing this until sometime in mid-June. That's how far behind our videos are. Anyway, <clears throat> it's nice to be... I had to actually put a jacket on. I've already been up on the roof and the whole roof is covered with dew. 
my my knees and my pants are getting completely soaked while I'm up there and it's chilly. Wah, 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 wah. Always complaining, right? Yeah, I know. I would rather have this than blazing heat. So here we go. Going to get the uh, panels up on the roof. So now I've got the first three panels laid up here. I wanted to get them all in place and make sure that they actually fit, and they do. How's that? Once again, dumb luck <laughs> that they all fit. Not exactly. I knew the width of the each panel and the the width of the truck overall, but when I before I ordered them, but it's just nice to actually see it work. I wanted to put all three of them up here before I started attaching one to make sure that I get them centered uh, on the rack rack there and this is looking very good okay now I will be layering these one on top of the other I have them separated so I can see the bar Okay, here's the U-bolt. Okay, so that's what I will be doing all the way around. I'm not going to tighten them with a wrench until I have them all in place so I can make sure that the uh, panels are positioned exactly the way I want them and then I'll tighten them down and that should be solid. Make the electrical connections.
Barely, but I got it. That was difficult. Okay, now I don't know exactly what this piece is called, but this is what you use to take the wires for the solar panels down through the roof. You put one wire in, in each of those, screw this down, it gives you a good watertight seal. So I've got this last panel just laying up here, so I can figure out where this goes. I have one wire right here, and one wire right here, so I guess I'll put this about there. I have to move this to mount that. But then that'll put it in the middle of where I need to connect these two wires. And that should work, right about there. Actually, I changed my mind. If I put it here in the center, then I'll have the wires attached here, and then I have a pretty long run of them going to there with nothing to support it. And I don't know what that would do with the wind. So I'm going to move it all the way down here. That way it'll be close to this, and I can... I can put zip ties or something around here to help support the wire as it goes in there. I'm sorry, this is really awkward to film. I'm standing at the top of a ladder, holding the camera with one hand, and I can't get far enough away from this to show you everything, and it's down underneath where it's hard to see, but hopefully you can get the idea. <laughs> Perfect. Now I can put the wires down through there and that'll protect them from getting cut on the, ed the sharp edge of this aluminum. This is not any kind of waterproofing, it's just to protect the wires. Okay, so now I've got the wires run down through the grommet, into the truck, and through here. And uh, I'm going to put this down with butyl tape to make it waterproof. put this facing the back so that as I'm driving any rain that hits is going to be hitting here not here Also, this came with screws. You're supposed to screw it down, but once again, I don't trust this thin aluminum to hold the screws. So I got nuts and bolts. I'll put these in and then I'll go underneath and put nuts on the bottom and tighten it up tight against the metal. That'll hold much better. Mm. 
All right. So now I gotta go down underneath and put the nuts on and tighten it up. Ready? Uh -huh. Okay, first one. All right, next. The one, the one closest to the wall, to okay. me. All right, just give me a second here. I got to Okay. <clears throat> got it. All right, next one. Okay, give me one second here. <clears throat> Hold it just a second, it slipped off. I got it. Okay, go back to the first one again. Okay, I think we're good. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Oh, sure. Okay, so now I got this all done. Got the wire over there. So I'm gonna put the last panel on and then attach these wires up underneath. There's no way I'm gonna be able to record that because I'm standing on a ladder, eight feet off the ground. There's nowhere to put the camera. So I'll just have to do it and then show you when it's done. Also, the sun just came up over the trees. So now all of a sudden I have sun on the metal. It's gonna to start to get very hot, very fast. <laughs> so there are a couple of reasons that I wanted to install the solar panels on the roof. One, of course, is to save a little money by doing it myself instead of having Jeff do it for me. But the main reason is because we are gonna be driving out to Utah to get the big solar system installed. And on the way out, we wanna be able to have <clears throat> power. So I wanted to be able to charge up our little solar generator here. And if I plug this into the dashboard, it's very slow. It takes like 20 hours to charge and that wasn't really acceptable. And I do have one portable solar panel that I can plug into this. I can't be doing that while I'm driving and it's only hundred Watts. So I wanted to put it on the panels on the roof so that I can charge this while we drive. That way we can do not only computers, because I still have to keep my business running, but also our refrigerator for our food on the way out and that sort of thing. So I was concerned about whether this would could handle 1200 watts, uh, which is what I've got on the roof. So I went to the website and looked at all the specs and it said, yes, in fact, the max uh, charge that you can do in this is 1200 watts. So I thought, great, this is going to work well. And then I got the solar panels all done and got ready to plug it in and I discovered that there's two ports here for charging and each one has 600 watts max. So I was concerned about plugging that in 1200 watts into one. <coughs> I probably shouldn't have because it could have burned the whole thing out. But anyway, I plugged, I plugged it in 1200 watts into one of those ports and um, it only gave me 15 watts of charging. I thought, oh great, something's not working with the solar panels. What's going on? And then uh, I suspected that maybe it had some sort of a limiter in there, some sort of protection that would override it and it wouldn't allow 1200 watts to go in. So here's what I did. I have two banks of solar panels here. I have the front one and I have the rear one. And each one with three panels gives 600 watts. You see right now it's still dew covered. <laughs> So I isolated off this back panel, so right now only the front panel is working. So this is the wire that comes from the front panel and goes into there. And then this is the plug right here for the back panel. And instead of bringing this out and plugging it into that, I ran a temporary wire that way and plugged it into the back of the front the front panel the front uh, bank over there so once i get the entire system installed all i have to do is just cut this wire right here put another connector on connect it right in there and it's done very easy to uh completely get the entire 
system working again. That's a lot of solar panels. <laughs> So now I've got it switched over, so I'm only using 600 watts on, on the roof instead of 1200. Remember with 1200 it only gave me 15 watts of charge. Let's see what we got now. Three hundred and twenty-two. Three thirty-three. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Um, right now it's there's no clouds, but it's kind of a hazy overcast and the 600 watts of solar panel are giving me 343. Uh, I tested this yesterday right when I finished it and there was no, it was a clear sky, sun was shining. It was giving me 450 watts. So I'm very happy with this. It's good because it's going to be plugged in all the time. It's going to be charging the whole time that we're driving, you know, basically from sun up to sundown, it's going to be charging. That should give us more than enough power for what we need for our refrigerator and those other things that we need to run. Then once we get out there and I get the entire system installed, it'll be very easy for me to just switch this back over to the full 1200 watt solar banks. So now I'm doing an experiment. I have my mini split air conditioner running on the solar power while it's plugged into the panels. And it's showing it's charging at 352 watts and the air conditioner is pulling 300 watts so that means that even with this little solar generator plugged into the panels I could run this air conditioner all day long and it would still continue to charge the solar pan the solar generator it wouldn't it, at night this is only powerful enough to drive the air conditioner for maybe an hour and a half, but uh, I can run it all day long without any drain on the battery at all. That's really cool. Now there's actually one other advantage to having these uh, solar panels installed like that, and that is that it keeps the entire truck much cooler. How do solar panels keep it cooler? That's a big shade tree up there. <laughs> because of the way it's mounted, they're off of the roof and air can go underneath of it. And it means that like three quarters of the, of the roof is now covered in shade instead of blazing sun. It's like parking under a shade tree. So don't, don't get me wrong, it's, it can still be quite hot in there. But if it's parked out in a parking lot and everything's closed up, I've already seen a significant difference. You go inside there and it's like 110 degrees instead of 150 degrees. So it, it really is making a difference. And then that'll make it easier uh, for the air conditioner to keep up with it, keeping it cool in there. And that's without even putting in the insulation in the ceiling yet. That's still to come. But even without the insulation, I can notice a, diff a significant difference in how cool it stays inside there because of the shade provided by the panels. Very cool. Well, dear, solar panels are done. Yep. I think it's looking like an expedition vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> I and love it's, it. it's actually charging our little solar generator uh, on just half of the, pa the panels that are up there. So Pretty cool. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. yeah it completely changes the look of it. Yeah. It's been that way for a few days now. I've been driving it around, and three times somebody approached me and said, cool rig. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened without the solar panels on it. I think, like she said, it makes it look like a real serious expedition vehicle. <laughs> yeah. Even though it's not four-wheel drive. Yep. So. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited. We're going to really be able to do things like boondocking and do very well. Right. Once we get the full uh, solar system in there with all of the batteries in it, it's going to be very good. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So thanks for watching. Yeah, live simple. Live free. You be blessed. And we'll talk to you guys soon and bring you along and everything else that's going to happen. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love you guys. Bye-bye.